Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, as always, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content, playing a very exciting team from a Japanese player called Taka. This is the rental here, you can see, so you can try it out for yourselves. But the team has got a Turtonator on it, so enough said, we don't need to go into anymore. But no, seriously, Turtonator, really nice call, fire dragon type, very rarely gets any sort of usage, but really nice to see it doing super well in this team today. Obviously, Taka's socials will all be linked down in the description as well as the blog post, where he goes into a bit of detail about the team. Obviously, consisting of the Dialga gonna be the restricted on the team, got that kind of familiar partner with Grimmsnarl, with the scary face support, spirit break, you know, fake out and fake tears, which works so nicely with the Dialga. Not opting for screen support like we'd normally see, but a nice kind of change and a still very good supporting role. You've got Urshifu, Rillaboom, and Landorus, kind of common themes that you see run with Dialga to help kind of function well. And then the Turtonator there, it's going to be one of those Pokemon, you know, that operates in Trick Room very well. And if you give it that tiny bit of room to kind of set up with those Iron Defenses, it's got Fire Spin for the residual damage every turn, and then those Body Presses are just going to be ridiculous. So I'm hoping we can get it going today. I'm very excited to be using it. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. We'll have a couple of games wrap up with the rental at the end. So sit back and let's get into this Turtonator Fest today. Okay, first up today, we have a Zashian Perserker, the Ndidi male, Gold Duck, Aurorus, and Lorantis. Wow, what a squad. You know, we're like ranked 400 and something, so we're not like low down on the ladder. This isn't like some team that's just plucked out of like the bottom of the ladder. This is doing well at the minute. Um, so it's going to be tough. You've got the Steely Spirit that's going to be supporting the Zashian, boosting its attack even more, making it very difficult to kind of deal with. But we do have one thing that does like going up against a Zashian and a Berserker. It's going to be our little Turtonator. And if we can get some sort of... Um, and defense boost up on it it's going to do amazingly well in this match i think the thing to kind of keep in mind that the the, the things that could be problematic for us for sure are going to be things like the the gold duck uh and the indeedy with its terrain support as well uh i'm gonna go with turtonate and landorus i'm gonna bring really boom in and i think we'll round off with dialga that's how we're gonna go i'm going full ham on turtonator in this game feel like it can do some work we just need to support well enough. Let's see Turton it and absolutely destroy Zashin. My opponent doesn't have really great ways to deal with it outside of like the Gold Duck, really, you know? So let's see how they uh, they approach this one. Let's see, there it is, the Steely Spirit and the uh, Berserker. So the Intimidate here going to be really key for us, you know? Like straight off the bat, going to be able to just keep that, that Zashin kind of in check a little bit. Um, and what I'll probably do, I think to preserve the Intimidate, I think we might be better off protecting. Because Perserka does get a fake out, which is something that we need to be aware of. Um, I'm kind of tempted to switch in Dialga, and then we can switch Landorus back in. The big problem here would be, obviously, if the Zashin goes for like a substitute, uh, and then it's kind of immune to any further Intimidates that we, uh, we have... Um, in our arsenal, so to speak. So, Turtonator going for that protect. Let's see. Are we going to see a, a fake out? Yeah, there's a fake out into Turtonator. Are we going to see a double up into that slot? Behemoth Blade into Dialga. I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of all right. It's going to hit hard, though. Ooh, okay, we, we resist it. So, it's probably the best case scenario. And then now we can go for our Iron Defense. Um, and we can switch Landorus back in. And put these Pokemon, at least the Zashin down to minus one, the Berserker down to minus two. And we are starting to get our Turtonator set up. And um, you know, the nice thing is I love the Fire Spin tech on it as well because it not only traps your opponents in, it gives you that chip damage every turn. Is it like one, one eighth, I think, every turn? So, yeah, Berserker going to switch out. Losing that Steely Spirit, that's great. Gold Duck coming in, that's fine. That's fine, because we can switch to, to Rillaboom the next turn and, like, really pressure. Um, there's a Sacred Sword. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, that's that's ideal. We're running circles around my opponent at the minute, but it's not as, it's not as straightforward as that, you know? It really isn't. <laughs> um, we can't get too cocky. So we have to protect, because we don't want to take, like, a max geyser or anything like that we'll get really boom onto the field and again this is just helping us out keep that landorus kind of rotating uh keep it in the back 
uh, for when the Zassian comes back onto the field uh, and the Ndidi coming onto the field, which is perfect because now they get the Psychic Trainer, but I mean, we're going to get Rillaboom in. We're going to be in a, an amazing spot uh, just to really crush that Golduck this next turn. And anything else that kind of comes in, it might be worth, well, you know, I'm, I was going to say it might be worth going after the Ndidi the next turn, but is it worth um, allowing my opponent all the room to kind of go after the Turtinator? You know, that's the big thing because they're not maxing just yet. Uh, and there's a Scald. Oh, going after the Boom. No burn, no burn. That's the big thing for us. Because if we got burnt there, that would be that would be bad. Now, do we double into Golduck? Because I feel like we could potentially just grassy glide and body press, or 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 we get cheeky and go for a fire spin and trap like something like Berserker that comes onto the field, and then just go after. Because I feel like the Golduck has to switch out here. It may not though. That's the big problem. It may not. It may go for a geyser. <sighs> it's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. Does he indeed switch out? Because I think... Hmm. I think we double up. I think we double up into it. Uh, yeah, let's just double into the Golduck. It's probably going to switch out, but anything coming in... Yeah, if it's going to be the Berserker, then a body press plus the grassy... Oh, it's Zashin. Huh. What's the DD doing then? This is great. DD's maxing. Gonna try and get rid of our terrain. That's what it's trying to do. Let's see. Max, you're not getting rid of Rillaboom. No, you're gonna go Max Mindstorm, 100%. Where are you going though? Are you going after Turtonator? Are you going after the boom? I think you go after boom because boom's like the the route to stop having like the removing like the big thing that stops Golduck being able to remove Turt in it. So I think that's where you you target. Oh no! Wow, Turt in it, you're taking far too much damage. That's not ideal. Turt in it, we I didn't expect that to happen. How much damage are you going to do to the Zashin? I don't expect it to be a massive amount. Okay, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not the best. It's not the worst. Okay, well, we'll protect. We'll go back out to Landris. This might be very obvious. This might be very obvious. But we need to get the uh, the Intrepid Sword boost of the Zashin. Um... Because Grassy Glide will get the uh, the Zashin going forward. We'll probably lose Landorus here. I can imagine my opponent kind of seeing right through into this, you know. Behemoth Blid. I here we go. Yep. Uh, well, Landorus takes it. So, a max strike. Yeah, doubling into that slot. Oh, no. Not doubling into that slot. Huh. Okay. Well, we might have to sack off Turtonator, you know? Because I don't really feel like we've got room to... Hmm. I don't want to lose Turtonator, though. I'm a bit sad if we do lose Turtonator. Um... And I can't switch it. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so what I think we'll do is we'll switch Dialga in here. Can I afford... No, I can't afford to lose Landorus. I think what we'll do is we'll go Body Press into Zashin. We'll probably lose Turtonator and we'll switch Dialga into Landorus. Again, my opponent can kind of see through this. Go for a Sacred Sword maybe into the Landorus slot. It's a little bit risky though because then at the, at the same time, if you do that, you risk taking potentially an Earthquake if we stayed in. Yeah, but they're going for it. Ooh, into turn here. And it is enough. <gasps> oh, it is enough. Even with that high defense boost. Okay. Right, well, not ideal. I will say that. But at the same time, we get boom in. Uh, we get rid of the psychic terrain, which is a pain in our side. We've got the grassy glide to get rid of the Zashin next turn. We can go after the Ndidi with Dialga. 
Um, and they probably switch in DD out, to be honest. Because we kind of are almost pinning my opponent at the moment. We just got to be careful because they're going to probably switch both out here. Um, hmm, hmm. I mean, Raw of Time is not a bad option. Steel Beam. Let's just do that into DD. Yeah. Problem is, I don't know if we're going to be able... I don't know if we outspeed DD with Dialga. Okay, when well you switch out, what's coming in? Berserker? Has to be, yeah. I wonder if the Steely Spirit... The Steely Spirit, does it just give the... Is it just an attack boost or is it just a boost to all steel type attacks in general from steel types? I was under the impression it was like attack boost for steel types. Just hoping Dialga can take an attack from the Ndidi. It should do from this range. And like if we get rid of the Ndidi then it's we're kind of fine. Yeah. <sighs> it does a lot to boom because the grassy glide is, is all we need to get rid of Zastian. Is that Sash? Yeah, I think it is. Mm, it's not brilliant. Okay, well, a defense boost definitely going to help us out a bunch. And we, uh, we kind of lock this next turn where we have to like double max guard. Um, just because of the fake out, because another hyper voice is not something that you know. How do we attack with? Dialga, because hmm. let's go Wormwind I can't protect with Dialga at this point you've got no protecting moves but I, I feel like protecting Rillaboom here we could go for the Grass Glide but I think the Fake Out Hyper Voice is too much of an issue and we need Boom as healthy as we can whereas Dialga doesn't really worry about the Hyper Voices too much like, still taking a, a good chunk of damage from them. But the fact that we keep Rillaboom on the field with the Grassy Glide intact is the biggest the biggest thing for us. Because anything coming on the field now, be it the, the Golduck or the Zashian, um, we'll be able to deal with. And that Grassy Terrain, like Recovery, is just keeping Dialga going especially because you know we've got um the residual damage from like the recoil damage from the life orb because otherwise we probably have like one more attack on us but thankfully we've probably got two more attacks if we can kind of um get ourselves into a good spot it's just going to be difficult to deal with the berserker this next turn because i think you know we go grassy glide into the zashin what have we got that's really going to take down the berserker Max Wormwind resisted, resisted, resist. Everything resists. Steel Spike is probably our best bet because it's a physical attacker, you know? Okay. Well, Golduck coming in. Huh. Well, be, I mean, it's going to be able to take it just as well. Yep. Are they trying to stall out the grassy terrain? They are. So... We'll be interested to see how much this does to Golduck, you know. Yeah, it's a good amount of damage. Probably want to. Mm, do we? Want, I don't really want to protect uh, Rillaboom at the moment. The problem is, I think Golduck probably outspeeds both of our Pokemon. Um, and Landris is definitely our best option to kind of come in and close this game out for us. But I think you're so scared to lose Zashin at this point. Like, do we take an Ice Beam? I reckon we take an Ice Beam from the Golduck, you know. I really do. I feel like we do. Let's just go Power Gem into Golduck. That should be enough to take it down, especially with Life Orb. Um, yeah, I think... Golduck's such a tricky Pokemon because it's... Yeah, okay, they're switching out. Now, the Grassy Glide should get the Zashian here. 
Um, Paha Gem's gonna do zip. Yeah, okay. Now we're in a good spot because will Dialga go down to recoil damage here? Potentially. But the problem is now, yeah, we lose our grassy terrain, which is which is the worst. But I mean, we do have all these boosts under our belt. Does the grassy terrain end now? Because that would be bad. That would be bad. Now we got one more, maybe one more turn. Okay, let's see what we can do. What's this land risk going to be able to do? We're a salt vest. An earthquake is not the best option here because of the terrain. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. hmm. How many turns? I think we've got one more. Yeah, one more. Plus two defense. Do we grassy glide? And then they have to fake us out. I think we grassy glide. And I think, oh, grass knot as well. Ha. Huh. What? Ah, uh, we are assault vest. Yeah, we grassy glide. And just earth power. And just earth power. Yeah, we just double into gold duck and hope that we're faster with something. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be faster. Oh, icy wind. Landers avoid. Oh, we are so lucky. We're so lucky here because that is just, that is horrendous from my opponent. Like the one thing that you want to hit in this situation is is Landorus, because you take us down, I'd imagine. We're a salt vest, but we're so low health at this point. Like, you take us down, and then pretty much between Golduck. I mean, if that's its only move to hit us with, it might be a bit different. We're plus two defense, but still, Berserker's not the... It's not a slouch, you know? Whereas now, because of that miss, which is so unfortunate for my opponent... Uh, that's brutal, brutal, brutal. Uh, we get the Earth Power. So, yeah, it's a really nice team from my opponent, to be honest, you know. Um, like, you, you see the Berserker, you see the Zassi, and you kind of initially think, is it a bit gimmicky? But, you know, like, my opponent's made a really nice team with it because you've got the Golduck, which shuts down all kind of weather options with the Cloud9 ability. Um, so it works really well. It Like, just really making it difficult struggle for those, like, Kyogre, Groudon, Torkoal, Venusaur teams to kind of function. Uh, so, re yeah, we got very fortunate there. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the game. That's our first one. Good game to my opponent. And we'll jump into our next one of the episode. Okay, next up today, we have a Venusaur, Groudon, Thunderous, Celesteela, Incineroar, and Tapu Fini team. So we've got that Groudon, Venusaur kind of combination there. You've also got Thunderous as well, which complements the Venusaur pretty well. And the Groudon mode, because it can deal with most things that, you know, those two can't. Especially, namely, things like Kyogre. Celesteela gives you... Wide God support, a steel type, another flyer as well for a little bit of ground resistance that uh, helps out Incineroar a bunch with that Intimidate support and then Tapu Fini. The one say, the thing that you would say for my opponent's team, they've not got any like real kind of speed control outside of kind of the manual sun with the chlorophyll on the Venusaur and then the airstream support from the Thunderous. Um, what's going to be the best way to approach this one then? Maybe Lander. I like Landorus as a lead. The only drawback would be against the Thunderous, potentially because of the, the Defiant ability there, which would not be ideal. Um, yeah, that would be that would be bad. Let's have just a quick check of this, this, this Landorus. I mean, we do have Stone Edge, so we can hit, hit the, the Thunderous. I really feel like Turtonate is going to be a good Pokemon here. It's just about mitigating potentially the Landorus. Um... Maybe Dialga is not a bad play, you know. Dialga, Grimmsnarl, Lando, and Turtonator. Even Rillaboom's not a bad shout, in all honesty, because at least with Rillaboom, it's kind of tough because Rillaboom has a real hard time against like Venusaur, Incineroar, Thunderous. But in the same respect, it doesn't do too bad against things like Groudon if it's positioned well enough, and definitely the Tapu Fini to override the terrain support. But I don't really see the Tapu Fini coming to this game, if I'm completely honest. I think we'll probably see something like, yeah, the Incineral, Thunderous, Groudon, Venusaur on the back. That would be my my best bet, you know? Okay, well, what options do we have here? 
Because we can't... Hmm, I mean, we can scary face the Thunderous. It's a very dangerous game to play, though, because we proc the Defiant ability, you know? Um, same with scary face. But we could go Max Hailstorm into them. Uh, and then scary face the next turn. Yeah. It's... It's not the worst idea in the world. We could fake out here and then go... Uh, yeah, let's go Max Hailstorm. I think it's probably a better option than, than Max Rockfall here. Potentially. Potentially. I want to fake out the Incineroar just for the fact that um, I want to avoid parting shot here. Okay, well, they're going to switch out for Groudon. Which is fine, because, I mean, we overwrite the sun in the end anyway. They're going to go max knuckle, I would imagine, here. So we'll get minimal damage. The problem will be the next turn. Like, you kind of want to... You want to chase down the Thunderous, but you cannot ignore the Groudon at the same time because of that Precipice Blades threat. I mean, we got Landorus in the back, but the problem is... Switching in in front of a Thunderous, isn't it? That's not ideal. I don't think they got Airstream here. I really don't. I mean, they may. They may do. But we're going to take minimal damage if we do see an Airstream, which is... It's kind of like... It's, you know... Three of one, six, six of another. You know, like, it's... Do we take... Do they get the attack boost onto the ground on? Or do they get the speed boost? I mean, they've got their options. This is why Thunderous is such a good kind of lead to go with. Oh, we'll get a cheeky old fake out, bit of chip onto that Groudon, which is always useful. And there's the knuckle. Okay. So it makes the scary face play a little bit more viable this next turn. The problem is the Groudon becomes a bit more of an issue because... I mean, the thing is, potentially, potentially, we could go after Groudon this next turn. Wow. I did not expect that to pick up the knockout. And no critical hit. Okay, so that makes things a little bit easier to deal with the next turn. Dialga surprising me here. It's the first time we featured Dialga on the channel as well, Series 8, you know. Uh, it's one of those, like, I love Dialga. And it is it has always been one of my favorite Restricteds. But it's just, you know, at the start of the format, you had that kind of Life Orb Tailwind variant that was kicking around. And then it went to kind of Trick Room variant. I just always felt there was better options to kind of feature on the channel at the time than Dialga. And it feels like it kind of just got missed out a little bit, which is slightly sad. Um, Now, I feel like we probably switch in Landorus. And go for another... Hailstorm. Mm, we could. We could max Wormwind. We could max Wormwind. It means we take attacks a bit better. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Like, the weather's not in play at the minute. Um, Dialga should outspeed Groudon. Potentially. May not. Uh, but I don't feel like we're going to get a scary face off with fake out pressure from the Incineroar this turn. So it makes sense to kind of utilize our Timidate while we've got the opportunity to keep the Grimmsnarl a little bit safer. Yeah, and then we are going to get the Max Wormwind as well. So that's quite nice. And, uh, wow. Okay, wow. Then Dialga just nuking stuff every turn. Dialga, we, you've got to keep in mind that we've got the Turton Air in the back. We need to bring it in at some point to uh, to try and utilize it. Maybe we can close the game up with Turton Air. Depending on what my opponent's got. We'll see. What's the perfect situation going to be? Potentially the Venusaur. Coming in. And then we can maybe... Ooh, I'd sell a Stealer. Okay. Well, we're probably going to need the Terminator then. We're going to need the Terminator. The Terminator. Um, hmm. I mean, a Weather Ball. And... Uh, Max Rockfall. Oh, Wormwind. Let's go Wormwind. Let's go Wormwind. You don't know what variant of Celesteela this could be. It's probably special, you know. But Incineroar definitely in Earth Power range here. So we'll be able to remove it. And then we'll close it out with Turtonator. And then hopefully we can do that. And that'll make the perfect end to this episode for us. All going well. Let's see. So it's a really strange Landorus on this team as well. It's like predominantly special with like Grass Knot Earth Power. Um, is it Sludge Bomb, I think? Maybe? No. 
I'm not too sure. Leech seed. Okay. That's fine. The issue always is, right? Like, switching in... The issue is, of course, switching in, like, Landorus now for something like Turtonator and taking, potentially, a big old fat meteor beam, which I don't want to do. Like, they're kind of baiting us out. I mean, they may just go for Leech Seed onto Dialga now, which gives us the opportunity to get Turtonator onto the field. But switching Turtonator in for the Landorus is always going to be risky. But I feel like, you know, if they want to go forward in this match, they've got the opportunity now with the board position where they can potentially get Leech Seed onto everything on the field. And they'll not be in a bad position for doing it. We could Blizzard pick up a cheeky freeze. Let's see. I wonder how much Blizzard does. Let's see. Let's see. Don't freeze, though. Don't freeze. Wow, it does so much damage. The life orb. Dialga's nuts. Scary. Strong. Okay. Leech Seed coming out. That's fine. Um, I still worry about the Meteor Beam. But again, at this point, another Blizzard probably gets the, the Celesteeler. Although the Leech Seed recovery with the, 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 the leftovers. Yeah, they got leftovers. They don't have Meteor Beam. So we're kind of safe. We're safe. Okay, should have noticed that last turn, but didn't. Too wrapped up in whatever is going on. Um, I mean, do we go fire spin here? I think fire spin would be nice. Residual damage, and then we can get those body presses in uh, and go for another blizzard. That'll probably be enough, that combination, you know. I'm just thinking, do I stall out long enough for turn it to come in and win, but... We don't need to, my opponent full fits, and uh, very good game to my opponent. Nice one for us to wrap up with. Uh, we couldn't quite kind of dominate with turn it like we wanted, but I do think it's a very good Pokemon. It's difficult to bring against things like Groudon, especially, so you need to kind of carve out a board position where it's safe to kind of bring in. It's not immediately threatened by the Precipice Blades because they will hit hard, probably not knock out, but still do a significant chunk of damage where you're not really going to be able to get those gains with the, the iron defense and kind of move forward from that point but uh, we have had glimpses of it today it's been a really nice team i mean dalga did so much work in that last one and the landers is a really nice pick as well with the special set rather than the physical so very good games to my opponent we'll hop over and remind you all of the rental team for today's team. okay friends here is today's rental team if you do try it out as always let me know down in the comment section how you got on with it how you found the team and what success you've had especially with that turn air because i think it's such a a real unique pick and i think it's a really smart one as well for the format the team's really nice massive props to um taka for creating and and making this available for us to uh, actually utilize the dialga is just ridiculously strong isn't it it's crazy strong you've got nice support options around it with the grim snarl uh obviously the ocean we didn't really feature today that or the rillaboom but you know the rest of the team we got to feature quite a bit so really had a lot of fun with it hope you do as well if you try it out and we'll wrap it up there friends so enjoy the rest of your day whatever you're up to take care of yourselves thank you so much as always for tuning in and i'll see you all for another episode on the channel with our vgc series 8 content very soon so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye